Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 58 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Before we get into what we're going to do today, which is going to be some pretty complex stuff, we're going to take a real quick look at what we built last episode over here. Uh, you can see I've done a little bit of digging around in this area in preparation for some expanding that I want to do down here. Now I want to have a bunch of stuff available uh, to my main AE network and to this area over here. So we're going to be extending our applied energistics network and getting some channels over here for this uh, whole system to work on and work with. Um, so as a matter of fact, because I want to clean this up and make it nice and tidy, I should probably do something like this. Yeah, we're going to put down our new alchemical furnace. We're going to put this guy down. There we go. And then we can put the coal back in. Nice. So remember last episode, uh, what we built was the following. Uh, where's my smooth stone? There it is. Uh, if you place an item in here to get broken down into its relevant aspects, like cobblestone, it'll quickly get converted. And you'll notice that the particle effect I said was missing is now there. That's because I have personally updated to the beta version of the Direwolf 20 pack, which is version 1.04 as of the time of this recording. It fixed a few things. There's one or two minor things that are broken. I'll talk to you guys about them in a bit. Uh, but it's really nothing major. Uh, and then 1.05 of the pack is going to be out pretty soon after 1.04 to fix some of the minor issues that we ran into. But anyway... This thing condenses the Essentia down. So we got the Terra and Perdito Essentia out of the cobblestone. Sweet. I am pretty excited about that. So clearly there's a lot of stuff we have to work on, and we're going to get to that right now. So one of the things I want to do is make sure I've gotten certain types of these Essentia crystallized essence available at all times. So for example, I'd like to have a full stack of crystallized Percantio always available. And hopefully I can accomplish that today. We're going to find out. Uh, you'll notice that I created a nice little tunnel that leads all the way out to my uh, main tunnel area here. Uh, this is all kinds of stuff that we were working on when we were setting up the farm and everything. So uh, clearly I've got some plans around this, huh? Yep, we definitely do. Let's do that. Nice, lighten it up. So what are we going to do? We're going to hook up our main system. Now the thing is, I don't know how many channels I'm going to want over here, but I have a feeling it's going to be more than eight because I'm going to want like import buses, export buses. I'm going to want to be able to tap into auto crafting. I'm going to want to have a handful of things that are available in interfaces. So really the best approach based on what we've seen so far is probably to run dense cable all the way from our main network over to uh, this room so that we can have 32 channels available over there. There's only one problem with that plan. Dense cable's expensive, man. Like, dense cable? Whoa. It costs a lot. So you can see here it's four ME covered cable, and each one of those needs some wool. So we need four wool. We need four glass fluix cables here. Uh, it's not a cheap thing, and you also need redstone and glowstone. So if we wanted to run like 100 blocks worth of, uh, you know, dense cable from one area to the other, that's going to get really expensive really fast, right? So let's come up with something that we can help to get around that. And for this, we're going to introduce the concept of P2P network tunnels. These allow you to transfer many, many channels over one channel using a P2P network tunnel. And I'm going to explain how these work, and I'm going to hopefully get you guys to appreciate the intricacies of applied energistics while I'm working on it. So which side of this controller has access to 32 channels? This one appears to be using zero channels at the moment. So let's go ahead and tap this guy in. Now you'll notice, of course, that that was hooked up to my energy acceptor, so we just lost power. I'm going to go ahead and tap into this guy. I'm going to place down a dense channel there, get our power flowing back, and I'm probably going to want to move this energy acceptor. Um, now remember, it doesn't use any kind of uh, channel, so it really doesn't matter where I place it. And it would also help if I was slightly less full of inventory at the moment, but let's see. Energy acceptor, there you go. I'm just going to tap you in right there, right on this guy. So let's remove him, I think. There we go. So energy going into energy acceptor, energy acceptor hitting this dense cable. Now we've just moved the energy acceptor to another cable. Remember, it doesn't use a channel, so you don't have to worry about the channels because energy doesn't use channels, right? So keep that in mind. So we've got everything back up and running. Let me clean up my inventory real quick. Um, let's see, I'll get rid of these things and I'll put some stuff in my blue bag that I don't need at the moment. Things like you and you and you and you. That should be sufficient. Um, yeah, that should be good for now. So let's take a look at 
P2P channels. We're going to take a look at how this works, and it's pretty cool, actually. So the first thing you want to do to get P2P channels going is have access to uh, some kind of channels, because in the end, you're still going to need access to all 32 channels here. So don't think because you're using P2P channels, you don't have to have access to the channels that you need. You still need them in the end, but it allows you to transmit them a long distance without using a whole lot of cabling. Let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and tap a P2P tunnel right onto here. Um, as a matter of fact, that's not how I want to go. Let's see. Why are you misbehaving on me now, P2P tunnel? Well, actually, yeah, that is how I want it to go. So we're going to get that. And then uh, you can see P2P tunnel is not too hard to make, just some Fluix, iron, and engineering processors. The other thing you're going to want access to is the following. Um, did I leave it in the thing up here? I did. A memory card. Okay, this is how you're going to link one P2P network to another. So if we shift right click this, you'll see it successfully saved settings. So we just stored the information about this particular P2P tunnel on this memory card. And we're going to use it here in a minute. Now, to make this very clear about how this is working, I'm going to have um, just a couple smart cables here and you can see it's using one channel at the moment because it's connected to that p2p tunnel but it is also offline it doesn't have any access to power so we're going to want to make sure power is connected here so let's get those quartz fibers like so and we're going to just run some cabling around this bend and actually you know what i'm going to do this with smart cable too so you guys can see how this works and let's see if i can grab just a few more smart cable in our network. I'm going to start the crafting process for it. Let's get like 10 more of these guys. That'll start cooking while I'm going. So what we're doing is we're not using any channels here, but we're supplying power to this network. And you'll notice that now the network has a blue line on it. It's using one channel. And if we take a look at the uh, P2P tunnel device, you'll notice it says device online, where a moment ago it said device offline. So if we remove this cable here, you'll notice this thing will run out of power in a moment, and uh, it'll say, say one of eight channels, but the slight blue line that's there will probably disappear momentarily um, once the power is drained out of it. There's a little buffer inside, right? So this line from the P2P tunnel onwards is a separate network that needs to be powered separately. But because we don't want it to mix channel-wise and data-wise with the main network, that's why we're using the quartz fiber here. So let's get this thing powered back up. And then we're going to run just some normal cabling all the way down to where we want to um, hit our main points. So let's do that. Let's get cables run along here. Cool. And I'm going to jump into bat form here to make life a little bit easier for me. So remember, normally if we want access to 32 channels all the way in this remote location, all of these wires would have to be dense cabling. And that would get really expensive really fast. Look at the crazy amount of cable I have to run over here. Okay. So we're going to tap this guy in, and we're going to um, come over here. Let's say we'll have some smart cable coming out here, and we're going to tap on another P2P tunnel, okay? And from here, we can run some dense cabling out, okay? And I'm going to run it out like this. And this is, of course, temporary. Let's see, is my smart cable done yet? It is. Beautiful. And we can run some kind of cabling out here. Okay, so we've got the cable ready to go and be used. So you'll notice now we're using two channels along this network, one for this ME, uh, P2P piece and one for the P2P piece back here in the main area. Let's get up here, I think would be easiest for you guys to see. But you'll notice still that we're not using any channels on the dense cable, okay? So no channels are actually being used. So this separate network component separate from our main network, being powered independently because of the quartz fiber, is using two channels just to transmit information from one tunnel to the other. So imagine that this thing, any channels that go through this cable, hit this P2P tunnel and get magically teleported to the other side and become available. So we'll see a little bit more about this when we start putting machines over here. Uh, so one thing I'd like to set up is an ME interface. So let's grab one of those. I should have one available, and if not, I can real quick request the crafting of one. Go, ME interface, go. Thank you. 
And let's also teach the AE system how to make sandstone. So while we're here, let's ask for blank patterns and let's hopefully have everything we need for that. And I'm really going to quickly teach this thing how to make sandstone. So what do we already know how to craft? We already know how to craft sand, but we don't know how to craft sandstone. So let's teach it. Let's see, are any of our blank patterns ready? Five of them, that should be enough. So we'll check out sandstone, which is just four pieces of sand. And we'll also check out how to get sandstone slabs. And then finally, we're gonna check out how to get chiseled sandstone. Chiseled sandstone. All oh, right, we should probably have some of these. There we go, chiseled sandstone, right? Sweet. Encode that guy. And then we'll throw them into our molecular assembler interface. So now if we're over here and we want to request sandstone, chiseled sandstone in particular, we can hit next start and it's able to auto craft it for us. That's cool. Uh, other thing we're going to want probably is a crafting card. Let's get one of these basic cards, a crafting table, and we'll get a crafting card. We're going to want another interface. Oh, we need more logic processors. Let's get some more gold. We'll do two for now. And then we'll throw the other 30 in there. Done and done. So I'm going to want another interface. I haven't entirely decided how I want to store the uh, Essentia just yet, but we'll figure that out. For now, maybe I want a storage bus. I need more logic processors. Let's get the gold out of here for a minute. Is my interface done yet? It is. Storage bus. Cool. And then we'll get the gold back in and steal any of these guys that are ready for me. Cool. Okay, so that should be good. I'm going to get some of the blank patterns I had. And I'm going to do the following. Let's sneak over here. Light this area up a little bit. The last component I need for this is some crystallized essence. And we're going to teach the AE system the following crafting pattern, okay? It's going to say that one sandstone, chiseled sandstone that is, equals one crystallized essence, okay? So that's cool. And we're going to place this pattern down here. So one thing we're going to want on this is, and we might want to, yeah, let's move this storage bus component. So I'm just going to pick all these things up for a minute because I'm probably going to want this in the wall anyway. So we'll move this here. We'll move this back into the wall a little bit. And then we'll put, where'd my P2P tunnel go? This is what you get for having a full inventory, guys. P2P tunnel, where'd you go? All right, I had to craft another P2P tunnel because Whatever one I had, it kind of vanished. Anyway, so let's load the memory settings. So shift right click saved the memory settings. Right click will load the memory settings. So now this P2P is connected to the one back there. And if we run some dense cable out of here, we should, for example, be able to tap onto that with some 
not so dense cable. And we're going to hook up a storage bus right here. So I'll use just some normal cabling for the rest of this, but I want you guys to be able to see the representation of how this works. So I did request a storage bus. I don't know if I grabbed it though. So there it is. Cool. So now I should be able to see crystallized aspects in the AE system, but I'm not yet. So let's give it a minute to finalize. So this is all here. Does this thing have power? Missing device channel. All right, clearly I did something wrong. Did this thing connect to this thing? It did, that's a problem. Okay. Herp, derp. Where is my painter? So we'll paint these guys the right colors. So we can paint this thing white. And we'll paint these blue. And there. Now that thing should be connected and will stabilize. So you'll notice we're using one channel here and we're using the storage bus. You'll notice that this guy is still only using two channels. Okay, and we'll get a little bit more into this, but we should have access to our crystallized aspects, which we do. Cool. Now I'm going to come over here and we'll remove this for now. And we'll tell this smart Fluix cable We'll put an interface on top, and, oh, you know what, no, we don't want this here. We want the interface here. And just to keep things consistent, I'll color these blue, even though it's really not necessary. And we'll put the patterns that we want to auto-craft with in the interface. So now, if you look, we're using a channel here and a channel here, which has a combined total of two channels, okay? We're still only using two on this middle line, but if we come all the way down this line here, you'll notice that we're now using two channels on this dense cable, two out of 32, it says, according to Whalen. So those two channels are basically being transmitted over this P2P network. So that's kind of how P2P networks work. I hope that's kind of clear to you guys, but as we do more expanding out here, hopefully it'll become even more clear, okay? But what we should be able to do now is request crystallized Essentia. You ready? So if I pull the 13 out of the network, we'll notice that it pulls them out of the chest. And if I request crystallized Essentia, say I want 10 of them, what it should do is it should be able to automatically craft the chiseled sandstone and dump it into here for me. See? And then it's going in here and it's, you know, doing its thing, producing crystallized essentia. And that, my friends, is exactly what we're looking to do. So now I have a way to automatically craft these, right? So if we let this thing go and we take a look, crystallized essentia, we should wind up with 10 of these in the end, uh, even though it might take a little bit because this thing does take a few seconds to crystallize. It's actually pretty quick thanks to our awesome earth node that we found last episode. Cool. So there's the 10 that I requested. It's there and it's available. So now what I might want to do is always keep a certain stock of these on hand. So let's do something like this. If I throw these channels together and I place that crafting card that I made in the upgrade slot here, and let's say that I always want to have half a stack. Right? So 32 always available. What it's going to do is it's going to start auto crafting until it gets those 32 and keep this ME interface populated. Cool, right? And as it gets dumped into this chest, it should move it out of the chest and throw it into this guy. Nice. So we let that guy sit for a few minutes and he'll eventually migrate over. At least that's the plan. We'll see if it works. Come on, you can do it. Crystallized Essence Percantio. We'll give it a minute. All right, there we go. Some of them moved over. We've got the 28, and we've got four more here, so they'll move over in a moment too. 
All right, guys, so I found out something interesting. I wound up having to place an import bus here instead of a storage bus because uh, the storage bus wasn't registering that the crafting had completed. So watch, if I take half a stack of this stuff out, you should see this thing quickly click on and start producing some uh, sandstone, throwing it in here and doing all the auto crafting for us. There it goes. So you can see sandstone going in and the crystallized essentia is cooking. And you'll notice that very quickly now, everything is behaving the way it should. It's automatically going in here. So the storage bus, when the crafting request came in, it didn't recognize it as being complete because the storage bus um, wasn't updating the fact that the crafting was completed. So if you want to do something like this, you have to use an import bus or you have to use something else. Um, I could put an interface there instead of the chest if I wanted to. So for now, this thing is behaving itself and it's working beautifully. So now that we've got that, we have a way to automatically keep a stock of certain crystallized aspects. All we need to do is add patterns to this thing. Now, if we want to add more patterns, we can obviously fit uh, another interface with recipes on this side and on this side and on this side and even on the, well, maybe on the bottom. I don't know if it can go on the bottom. The, pro the, the bottom of the thing is probably reserved for the coal input. So we can at least have four of these going in here. So that's pretty cool. I am excited about this. So there we are. We kept 32 crystallized aspect. If I throw these in here, uh, it'll just wind up going into the system. And if we look at um, Essentia, we'll see that we've got the 16 available here uh, that are available, you know, aside from the 32 that are stuck in the interface school. Nice. I like it. All right. So let's take a look at something else now. So I find it incredibly unlikely that we're going to want access to this stuff in the basement. It's probably when I'm up here doing actual work that I'm going to want to have access to these 32 uh, Procantios. So if we come in here and check out our essence and we ask that we get a handful of these, there we go, 32. There we are. So 32 available at all times. That's going to be made available up top. Nice. Uh, all I have to do is tap into that with some cabling. So we'll probably hit some cabling up like this. Well, that's probably not what I wanted to do now, is it? Yeah, that'll work. Cool. So this thing will, of course, have access to the AE system now. It'll be powered up and we're good to go. Cool, right? So now that we've got that going, let's look at a little bit more automation around this. We should start considering what other aspects we're gonna to wanna to have access to at all times. Um, but I think what I'm gonna wind up doing now that the foundation of this system is built is I'm going to just, as I go along and find things that I need often, I'll start adding them to this interface. And if I have other things I need more often and I reach the fullness of this interface, I'll add more going up the wall or something like that. All right, guys, a little bit of researching later, and I found something cool. Uh, this is something that's really fun to get into once you've gotten to the automated alchemy step. This is a machine that's uh, mostly fueled by Thaumcraft automation to allow you to automate a lot of the alchemy that we normally have to do manually. And this is going to make uh, our automatic creation system a lot better. So normally we have to drop items in this crucible. That gets really painful really fast, especially when you want a lot of things. Like if I wanted like half a stack of nitor, for example, that would become really painful to automate. So let's take a look at the alchemical construct and how it works. All right, guys, so I'm almost done getting ready all the stuff I needed. I just had to recharge my wand because I got really low on uh, the Essentia in there. So let's put together, I'm going to want four of these guys. So let's try that. I think it's gold in this thing. Right, Arcane Alembics, done and done. That looks cool. We can put away some of the stuff we don't need now. So I've got a few things here. I'm gonna wanna grab some glowstone and some coal. And we'll pop down here to see what kind of cool thing we can put together. So the first thing we're gonna want is the um, machine here that's going to be responsible for automating the alchemy. And for that, I'm going to want my wand, which I just left upstairs, Dire Derp. I don't know how much uh, aspects we need here, but we're pretty full on this one, so I'd be surprised if we need more than we have. Just uh, build it like this, the two alchemical constructs in the furnace, right click, and that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. 
Uh, let's remove that wand. Okay. Something like this. Did I do this wrong? Alchemical construct, alchemical construct, and crucible. Oh, crucible. Ah, there's the problem. I had an alchemical furnace ready. Didn't I have an extra crucible here? I must have left it upstairs. I need more iron. One crucible, briefly prepared. And you know what, I'll probably need a night tour as well, I think. I think this thing needs a heat source. Uh, so let's see, the crucible goes like that, and then we can right click this, and there we go, now we've got the automation. So there's a couple points that we need to do. Uh, first off, you'll remember that when we're doing um, alchemy, and you want to make nitor, for example. You need to get certain aspects in the crucible, and then you need to drop an item in that acts as a catalyst, and then becomes the magical item that you want, like nitor. So, for example, in order to use the alchemical construct, we place the ghost glowstone in the slot here, and it's going to automatically detect that glowstone is a catalyst for nitor. And it's going to sit here and tell you, I need some fire, some ignis, uh, or yeah, some ignis, some lux, and some potentia. Right? So in order for us to get this, uh, we're going to want to make the following items. And we're going to check the A system to see if I have any. So torches, we're going to want, you know, three of those, right? And, uh, you know, let's go with two sets of these as usual, right? So we'll go six torches and uh, coal, which I might have to rescan. I think when I did the update, I have to rescan my stuff. Not the end of the world. Coal has two of each, right? So we're going to want three pieces of coal in here. Okay, so let's get a few more torches. So six torches and two pieces of coal. And to get this going, I'm gonna go ahead and use alchemical furnaces with uh, two Alembics each on top. And you'll notice that they automatically connect to an uh, adjacent alchemical construct. So we don't have to run tubes through here. We could if we wanted to, but we don't need to, okay? So what I'm gonna do is um, prepare to put 16 of this in here and 16 of this in here. So all we need now is to cook up our six torches and our three coal. So let's first cook up three coal, boom. You'll notice that as this cooks up, it's going to drain uh, into the alchemical construct and indicate that we've got what we need. So we've got fire and potentia there. And then we also need the, uh, I think you wanna click on this night tour and that'll activate the recipe. And now you'll see these bars at the bottom ready to accept from the adjacent slots here. So now let's go ahead and place our six torches in here. And what we should see is this thing getting ready to craft. I think. Oh, you know what? Remember, like I said, you need a uh, heat source on the bottom. So we'll toss this guy down here. And now we should be ready to go. So there we go. We're drawing in the uh, adjacent aspects. And Nitor gets spit out the front here. Nice. So we've got an automated way to make Nitor. So let's come up with a little bit of automation to really make this thing do what we want it to do. Now, if we wanted to get uh, Alimentum, for example, uh, we could do the following. So let's uh, take a look at the Alimentum recipe. So it's just charcoal with some Perdito and some Potentia and Ignis, right? Interesting. What's a good source of Perdito again? Oh, right, Cobblestone. Um, but Cobblestone also has Earth on it, so we don't really want that to go in there. Let's see if there's anything that has just Perdito on it want to say there isn't anything that I know of that has just Perdito. Um, so cobblestone is the only thing we know so far, obviously. Like I said, uh, I think my thing is reset here. So for now, let's go ahead and use some of the crystallized aspects for that. So if I were to check in here for Perdito, we should find some crystallized aspects. Sweet. So if I were to want to make myself some Alumentum, we could use the same exact setup. We just say fire, three Perdito, three Potentia, and some charcoal, right? So let's grab one, two, three more of these. That'll get me three more uh, crystallized Perdito here pretty quickly. Cool. There goes the Perdito. Looking good. And that should be all done. Almost. There it is. There's the third one. So on one side, we'll put the six per detail. And we'll want some charcoal, right? And 
and we're going to want to we'll leave this on i think do we have access to two recipes in here we do we can extend this by the way to more recipes um but i'll show you in a minute let's see we'll turn this off and we'll turn this on and you'll notice now that it has access to pull the perdito and we're also going to want the two coal okay so then this thing should start combining and doing its stuff let's see what happens Ta-da! we're going to get alimentum out of this thing awesome cool and it's cooking up it's got its three three and it's cooking all that up doing its thing Did I only put two in there or something? I might have, because I dire derped. There we go. Three and three. So this thing, oh right, I need another charcoal. That's why. Which obviously I have a ton of charcoal, it's just not in the AE system at the moment, right? There we go. So we can use the same alchemical construct to do multiple things. Let's automate it. You know, guys, I think I've filled up your brains just a little bit much for today. What I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here because we have a semi-big project ahead of us automating this piece of everything and automating some more stuff over here. Um, so let's do this. We'll come back next episode, and we will be able to um, continue some of the automation that we've been working on. Uh, real quick, I do want to teach the A-System how to make Perdito essences, right? So let's... Uh, Let's see what we've got essentially wise. I should probably have thrown a cobblestone in there while I was down there. Let's zip back, throw a bit of cobblestone in. That should be enough to get things cooking. And then real quick, I'll show you guys how with the new versions of AE, this is what's really cool and I like, is I can say one cobblestone makes one crystal essence of Terra and one crystal essence of Perdito. You might have known with previous versions of AE, this was pretty much impossible. You couldn't say one crafting pattern yields two items, but now you can. And that's what's really cool about this. So as soon as we get a Perdito Essentia going on here, which is taking its uh, sweet time, isn't it? There we go. I just dropped another one in there. So now we can encode this pattern. So now we call it that one cobblestone yields one Perdito and one Terra Essence. Neat, right? So we'll come back next episode and we'll do more automation around some of the Thongcraft stuff. And we're going to use these um, uh, mechanics that we just discovered to do all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to teach the A system how to make Nitor and Alumentum. Hopefully we can have both uh, machines uh, or both devices being made over here in the Alchemical Construct. Pretty sure we should be able to figure that out. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. More Thongcraft automation is in our very near future. All right, guys. Take it easy.